Spotify with Steph's Rock Show. I have a classy shirt and we were here with Brandon. Thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show today. Of course. So how is your day going? My day is going well. It started off on the wrong foot. So I'm just trying to shift those gears and get it back in the right lane. I like that positive Patty. You posted the other day about staying positive. You You have a good outlook. I I certainly put a full force effort into maintaining that. I think it's important. It's really easy to dig deep and go down, 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 down when we're focused on something that's bothering us or something that didn't go our way. But if we have the opportunity to shift our mindset and focus on the gratitude and all the blessings that we do have, then all those other little fickle things just seem to fade away. I agree. I agree. And I like the idea that we're kind of in the matrix. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that's real is art, like music and books and TV and everything else is just noise in the background. So don't let it affect you. Um, How often do you get asked for mustache rides? (laughs) You know, quite quite frequently. I've been rocking this mustache for, I don't know, probably 14 or 15 years. And, you know, that's just part for the course. Wow. Do you dye the mustache or is it just naturally darker? No, no, no. I'm not a fan. I'm all natural. When my hair keeps going gray as it is, it's just going to keep going and I'm going to be a wizard. So that's fine with me. I want to keep too. as long as I humanly possibly can. I don't dye it anymore. This is natural. And there was a lot of silver and gray and wisdom streaks in the hair. But that's it. So I wonder, did it get dark from like so many girls suffocating you <laughs> and like you didn't get enough oxygen? Well, you know, when you're deprived of oxygen, things die. So, yeah, maybe it toned down the color a little bit. Okay, sorry. So, you played the boardwalk recently. I want to hear more about your musical projects as well. I get distracted by the mustaches. But you're in Party Train, Atomic Pumps. Tell me about your music projects. And I love that you're local around Sacramento, too. Yeah, so that's a new thing. Um, My wife and I moved up here in 2020 after doing 13 years in Los Angeles. It was a tremendous change of pace, scenery for physical health, mental health, just everything. It was a necessary evil to keep life trending in the right direction. Um, And so up here, uh, I've been doing a ton of solo stuff. Uh, I put out a bunch of releases. My first solo album uh, was in 2020 and just keeping it consistent. And so a few years ago, I got a call from my buddy, Tony Palermo, who plays drums in Papa Roach, but he plays bass in his cover band, Take Cover. So that was a real godsend. That's who I saw, Tony, on your page. And I've interviewed him, but I think I interviewed him in like 2016. So I was like, I think that's Tony from Papa Roach, but no, it's not. But it is. It is. It 100% is. I'm glad you solved that mystery. Mystery solved. Yeah. 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 Tony's a fantastic guy, and I went to one of their shows and kind of surprised him. And he's like, oh, my God, you live up here now. Because we jammed a bunch of times in Hollywood at some of the Soundcheck Live nights. And he's just a phenomenal player. So they kind of uh, wanted to fold me in when their other singer had other commitments. So we've just kind of been doing double duty in that band, which is fun. And a couple weeks ago is when we played with the Atomic Pucks. I'm not in that band. One of my best buddies, Frankie, is. And so we had a powerhouse night at the boardwalk, which was just fantastic. And then actually this past weekend, I was in Lake Havasu, Arizona with Party Train. And that's who my buddy Frankie from Atomic Punks, he plays in Party Train. So just different irons in the fire, keeping the creativity going, keeping the voice in check and just raising the bar for myself so I can keep delivering the goods. I love it. I I have a similar story. I lived in LA for seven years and I'm back up. I'm from Northern California though. So I moved back home and uh, I I like NorCal a lot. I like to visit LA. I don't think I want to live there, but I love to visit. Um, It is neat kind of how you were talking about different irons in the fires. I'm interviewing bands and they've been in like four or five other bands, you know, or they're super band projects getting together. I love how it is a tight community and so many people start projects together. And I'm like, wait, don't I know you from that band? And then, you know, like Red Star just started and they were in three bands together. But that's how I knew Tommy. Yeah. He was a sweetheart. Yeah. I I interviewed him in San Francisco like a long time ago. But that's cool. You guys cross paths. So when's your next show or like what's coming up for you? Uh, there's a couple of things in June, uh, I think June 21st in Laguna Beach, doing some music in the park thing with Party Train, uh, July 13th up in Placerville with Take Cover and some stuff in July with Party Train. And it just, we're continuing to increase the booking and increase the visibility and just getting out there and having a damn good time. Because if we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. Absolutely That's true. Wrong. 
That's very true. You got to have a good time. You got to rely um, on that. So tell me about your dog. I feel like your dog on your page is like a big part of your life. You're serenading your dog. It's kind of, <laughs> you know, everywhere. Dolly is fantastic. She's a rescue. We got her about a year and a half ago. She's going to be two next month. And she's a total sweetheart, but a total handle. Uh, she was such a unique looking dog that we sent out for the DNA testing. Like, you know, what's going on here? We got the results back and we're like, there's no way. So we did a different company and same thing confirmed. So she's about 75% German Shepherd, even though yeah. she's all white with the, the, a black eye patch and different yeah. spottings and colorings. And she's got a bit of Husky, Chow, Pitbull, all the Australian dogs in there. So it's like German Shepherd and Super Mutt. So she's insanely smart, too smart for her own good. So she keeps us on her toes. That's for sure. Yeah. So how does wifey feel about you playing gigs and you being in the music industry and being on stage supportive or worried or what's oh, her vibe? Loves it and encourages it. That's, that's where good. she wants to see me shining and thriving because in my heart of hearts, that's where I belong. And so she's full on supportive and it's uh, just an amazing partnership and support system I've got built in. And I'm very grateful for that because I realize that, you know, many folks don't have that. That can be rare. There can be jealousy or there can be issues. So to have like your partner as your number one fan can really help your career blossom instead of, you know, hinder it. Yeah, because then it's not an issue. Oh, I rehearsal three nights this week and then a gig on Saturday and it's, you know, go crush them. Yeah. So we're local Sacramento supporting the 916 right now. What is your favorite place to play in Sacramento? Mm, mm, mm. You know, we played at Old Ironsides, which was a cool little dine and, down and dirty dive bar situation. Yeah. Uh, I've been to several shows at Ace of Spades. That's always a hoot out there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, those are some cool venues, but I'm looking forward to just continuing to explore more uncovered gems. Uh, when I first moved up here, I was actually pleasantly surprised at what a thriving rock community is up here. Yeah. Um, I went and saw one of my best buds. Uh, he plays in a Linkin Park tribute called In the End. And they are phenomenal. You close your I, eyes. Yeah, I've seen them. Those guys are the real deal. So I went to one of their shows at Goldfields in Roseville and was just blown away. It was packed wall to wall, sold out. And that's when it like, oh, wow. And the next show I went to was packed, sold out. Jerry Cantrell, packed, sold out. Zach Sabbath, packed, sold out. So it's like people want some rock action up here. So it was very encouraging, particularly getting involved with Take Cover and going to be bringing a party train up here as well. Very cool. Yeah, people want to show up, you know, and show out. And I think it works out that there's actually less venues in SAC than LA. So more people will actually come on that night to the show. And speaking of Goldfield, I liked the Midtown location, but the Roseville one really gave it a run for its money. It is a gorgeous venue and just really, really cool. And they always hire like the hottest bartenders. Right, These chicks right. are so hot. I'm like, do I want to order a drink from them or just stare at them while I'm at the bar? I can't figure it out. <laughs> That's hilarious. They got something going on because the same ownership is Folsom Hotel and same scenario. And it's everybody so kind and friendly. So it's been very encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. So who are some of your inspirations to get in music? Who did you look up and kind of dig as an artist? Well, I cut my teeth in the 90s. I grew up in Seattle before moving to Northern California as a teenager. So it was definitely all the grunge kings. That was right in my backyard. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Nirvana. And creep started creeping in the other stuff. And Metallica and my five older brothers were always turning me on to something new, whether it's Skinner or NWA. So my musical palette was very diverse from the onset. And I just kept the exploration, just fell in love with it. I wanted to know who these people were and what they were all about. So I was an avid kid who wanted to catch the bus to Tower Records so I could get copies of Hit Parader so I could learn more about Scott Weiland and, you know, what this guy looks like a maniac. What is he really all about? Yeah. And, and the magazines turn into autobiographies and just always on that educational immersion to figure out the path that my heroes went through. And it's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. I dig how you just said caught the bus to the record store that aged us because I have too caught a bus to tower records to pick out <laughs> records. And now kids just log on or go on their phone to buy the song. Right. And uh, at no least I, I will say people buy the music though. I think the little blurp of LimeWire and stuff, I think that's out. I think people aren't illegal downloading or if they are, that sucks. Right. But 
I do think they're purchasing, but I miss that in person. You're waiting in line with people that are also fans outside of the record store mm -hmm. and you meet and you bond to run in to buy that album together. The kids right. don't get that nowadays. No, absolutely not. And unfortunately, it's created the generation of um, being entitled to access of all the world's recorded music at their fingertips for zero dollars and zero cents. So it's completely criminal in that respect. And it's just gutted the monetary aspect of making a physical record unless you have a, you know, astute, loyal ass, mega huge following. So it forces the artist now to be creative. But kids these days, they have no idea, particularly yeah. new bands. When I first started my first band, Diamond Lane, in high school with my best bud, it was in 2001, 2002. So you had to earn the privilege to get into a real studio to record not with the shortcuts and the technology we have today. So it was a much more hard, hard fought tooth and nail approach for now the access is just unreal. The floodgates are open and that has pluses and minuses. Right, exactly. The pros are we have more selection of music to find on the internet now. The con is if you're not signed to a major record label to start with or a huge clothing company, because that's all of a sudden become a, a thing too, or even an energy drink company that can front you all this money, it's really difficult to make money on your own as a band. And even touring now with gas and hotels is really expensive. Usually all the bands are in the hole from touring. They right. just wanted to meet the, you know, fans and get their music out there. But it's not like how it was in the nineties where it's like, Oh, we're about to make a ton of money when we go on right. tour and we sell this album and it's going to just, you know, catapult yeah. by itself. Exactly. They're buying the record for 15, 20 bucks. And that was the standard, in, you know, those days. So now that's, that's long gone. So you got to get crafty. And at the same time, it really weeds out those who are the lifers, who is committed for the long haul. And it shaves down the reasons on why people do it in the first place. If you're in it for dough, you're in it for fame, you're in it for all that, you're in it for the wrong reasons. You got to do it because you love it because it's yeah. part of who you are in your existence. And that's the train I'm on 1 million percent. So I'm never going to stop. I will always be recording my music and putting them out into the universe because recordings are special. We're capturing snapshots of our attitude and perspective at a given moment in time, freezing it for all eternity in a tangible form, and then keeping it moving forward. Because I know yeah. I'm not going to feel the way today that I did six months ago when I recorded those songs. So the evolution continues as it should. I love it, Brandon. That's the train you're on. And you guys got to check out Party Train. I will definitely tag you on everything. And thanks so much for stopping by Steph's Rock Show, the new podcast. Well, thanks so much, Steph. Appreciate you having me and hope you keep on rocking. Definitely. I'm going to have to come out to one of these shows when I'm not working one of these days. Yeah. I'm so down. We'll stay in touch and make it happen 100%. Oh, sure.